A Winnipeg jury is deliberating right now behind closed doors. They're deciding whether Raymond Cormier murdered 15-year-old Tina Fontaine. The 56-year-old pleaded not guilty to second-degree murder. CBC's Katie Nicholson interviewed Cormier several times over the last few years. Katie joins me from Winnipeg. Raymond Cormier, Katie, he gave you these exclusive interviews. How did that come about? Uh, honestly, it was just a call we made after we learned that he had made a, a law enforcement review agency complaint against the Winnipeg Police Service. We wanted to know, well, what was all that about? So I, I called uh, the Brandon Correctional Center where he was being kept, and within hours he returned my call, and he was very chatty. I don't know if it was because he had been in segregation for a year, uh, but he really wanted to get um, a reporter. He believed a, a reporter, an investigative reporter, would help look into um, many of the ways that he felt that he was being wronged in this case and, and in the evidence. And uh, we ended up uh, striking up a bit of an odd relationship where he would call me uh, periodically and, and feed me information from the case, tell me uh, all kinds of names to, to look into, that sort of thing. And the other thing that happened is he began to open up about his own life uh, and, and he told us things about who he was as a person. Uh, he copped to uh, juvenile delinquency and early life of crime and substance abuse. And he talked about uh, a chaotic home life where he felt he was neglected by his parents, uh, where there was alcoholism in his home, there were borders uh, and violence. Uh, and he says he started to act out because of that. Here's a little bit of, of what he told me about his childhood. I'd get drunk and I'd get angry and I'd put my fist through a window or whatever and I'd get involved or act out and I'd get arrested and then, then I'm at jail, at, at, at the police station and then, then guess what happens? I'm getting that attention now. Mm -hmm. Somebody's coming to see me and they take care of me. And I'm getting the love I need, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and then you don't. You, a kid doesn't know that. He doesn't doesn't know that that's what's happening. He's being indoctrinated into inappropriate behavior mm -hmm. to to meet his his needs. Now, Cormier would get a lot of attention over the years. Ninety-two convictions was the last tally that we got over three provinces. The jury heard during the trial, Katie, that police conducted an undercover sting before Cormier's arrest. Did he ever speak to you about that? Yes, in fact, that was one of the first things he wanted to get out of the way when, when I met with him in Brandon. Uh, he felt that uh, this had been engineered to try to catch him. Uh, he said very early on he figured out that the people who were living across the hall from him in this apartment building were undercover police and he was just playing along. Uh, and he was very angry with the way his arrest played out because as a part of this Mr. Big Sting, he was uh, to do a job in B.C. This is where he was arrested. He felt that the way that this arrest came down in the media uh, very publicly was it painted him as someone who was actually fleeing from Manitoba because that's where he was arrested in BC when in actual fact he had been there as a part of this police sting operation uh, and he still is quite angry with the, the chief of police here uh, who he blames for for sort of the optics around his arrest here's a little bit of, uh, of what he had to say about the sting what they did was they painted the perception in the hearts and the minds of everybody that I was the one who did it and that I had somehow escaped to Vancouver to hide from that. That's what the perception was. I don't know how many people told me, you were in Vancouver, what did you want to run for Vancouver for? I went to Vancouver because they brought me there. Now, Cormier is also quite angry with the former Minister of Child and Family Services, who he says convicted her or convicted him in his comments after his uh, after his arrest. Uh, the minister essentially saying now people can rest easy that the perpetrator has been caught, and he felt very slighted by that as well. And Katie, you've been communicating with Raymond Cormier since November of 2016. Did he ever waver? You know, he's always consistently said he did not uh, touch a hair on Tina Fontaine's head. Uh, he also, though, told me that he never had sex with her. But during the, the trial, jury heard evidence that, yeah, he, he had been bragging uh, in some cases about having sexual relations with Tina Fontaine. So where's the truth? That's really what the jury has to decide today and maybe even tomorrow. Thanks for that, Katie. CBC's Katie Nicholson in Winnipeg.